Okay, so welcome to E3050 week one lecture three. So in this lecture, we're gonna wrap up our um, review. So we're gonna solve two problems. The one problem is again a review of second order systems. The second problem gets us into the idea of how the zero or finite zeros of a transfer function affect only the form of the response. But we'll do a skill assessment exercise first because I wanna address uh, one issue of the issue of pole zero cancellation. But first, let's do problem 476. So here, make sure we're recording if we are. So let me uh, basically, let's see, should not have. So let me cut this out and just paste it in a new note. So we don't lose it. All right, so to solve this problem, let's just see what he's asking. So they're saying that if v, v in of t is a step voltage in the network shown here, find the value of the resistor such that these uh, specifications are satisfied. Now the first thing we gotta do is convert it into the S domain of our system. So there it is, SL, and this is one over SC. So the output, the voltage is defined as the voltage across the capacitor, the output voltage that is. So there it is, and then this is V in, in the S domain. Therefore, by voltage divider, our transfer function is simply given by 1 over SC over R plus SL plus 1 over SC. So if you multiply, and let's try to put this in standard second order form if you can. So this is V naught over V in is you get 1 over uh, S squared LC plus SRC plus 1. So this is equal to one over LC, S squared plus S, uh, you get R over L plus one over LC, and this is in standard second order form. Therefore, our omega N, and this should be very familiar to you probably from your circuit classes, is one over square root of LC, natural frequency, and two zeta omega N is R over L. So let's see. He's saying find the value of the resistor such that a 20% overshoot in voltage will be seen across the capacitor. So capacitance is given as one microfarad, L is given as one Henry. So we know we have 20% overshoot, so we can find zeta. So from zeta, we know we can find omega N first because we know L, we know C. We can find zeta from the percent overshoot. And so basically, basically using this equation, we can find R. So let's do that. Uh, so in the sense, 20% uh, overshoot implies that e to the minus zeta pi over square root of one minus zeta squared equals 0.2. This implies zeta is approximately, so I'm gonna fire up my TI-89 here, and let me pause the lecture and solve for zeta. Okay, continuing, so I get zeta is approximately 0.456, Therefore, R equals two zeta omega N times L, but we know what omega N is. It's two zeta one over square root of LC, which is omega N, times L. So plugging in all the values, L is one Henry, C is one microfarad. I already did this on the TI-89. This just was calculating zeta, and I get R as approximately 912 ohms. Now, let's check our answer in MATLAB, in the sense I already fired up MATLAB, so if I define S as our transfer function object, uh, let me say L is one Henry, C is one microfarad, where semicolon so there's no echo, and R I found as 912 ohms. So now our transfer function H is one over one over L times C divide by S squared plus S times R over L plus one over L times C. That's what I mean. Give it some time there. Then let's just step this guy. And since we are already given the percent overshoot, we can just ask MATLAB what it is. Hopefully, first of all, it's an 100 amp response. So let's go to taking this long. There 
this. Okay, so now I said it's good it's taking this long because this lecture is looks like it's pretty short. But anyway, let's just go through this. There's peak response, twenty percent, beautiful. Okay, so there it is, confirmed in MATLAB. So now let's do the second problem. So let me copy this, minimize this. Excuse me, pasted in this note, which is what I'm going to post online. So there it is. Let me close this other note. It's asking me to save. Nope, don't save. All right. So here it's asking, determine the validity of a second order step response approximation for each of the transfer functions below. And if you look at part A, basically our transfer function G of S is some constant times a finite zero at negative seven divided by a third order polynomial. So if you look at the pole zero map of this, so here's the pole zero map, you basically have real part, imaginary part. You have a pole at negative 6.5. So I'm not going to draw this to scale, obviously. A pole at uh, I mean, sorry, a zero at negative seven, and then you have a pole at negative 10, and another pole at negative 20. But you can see that the dominant pole is negative 6.5, and you call this the dominant pole because the contribution, dominant pole, the contribution of this pole to the system response is an exponential a decaying exponential e to the negative 6.5 t u of t, and this decays the slowest, whereas the, this one decays the fastest. However, a rule of thumb is a uh, rule of thumb is if the higher order poles, which are these, the higher order poles. Rule of thumb is if the higher order poles, uh, the real part of the higher order poles must be greater than or the magnitude of the real part must be greater than or equal to the real part of the dominant pole then second order response is valid valid so anyway I'm going to take a short break and I'll be back instantaneous in terms of lecture video time. Okay, I'm back. So anyway, what we're talking about is that if the rule of thumb is the magnitude of the real part of the higher order poles is greater than or equal to five times, I forgot this, the magnitude of the real part of the dominant pole, that means second order response is valid. In other words, right, let's say, uh, the, uh, let's say this, oh boy, did it crash? No. So let's say this was at like uh, five times this guy, which would be uh, 525, 32. So this, let's say this was at negative 33 and this was at negative 50. These decay so fast compared to this one that in, in this case, you could just ignore both of these poles. However, you since this negative 10 is not far enough away from negative 6.5, you can't ignore these. So in other words, the answer to part A is second, uh, therefore, so based on the pole zero plot, and yes, it did crash. Let me save this, close this, and let's restart the journal editor. I apologize for this. It's been an issue with Windows. I mean, it is an issue only in Windows that this journal editor keeps crashing, but this is the best software for me to take notes. So anyway, uh, therefore, Based on our discussion, uh, second order approximation is not valid. And this is the answer in your book if you look at it. And you can quickly you can quickly check this with MATLAB. Since let's just define our transfer function as 185.71 times s plus 7 numerator 
divide by s plus 6.5 times s plus 10 times s plus 20 and then if you step this and if you look at the response it's hard to tell but like uh, well it is kind of hard to tell it is, uh, I thought it would be easier to tell, but it's not. In that, in the sense, if you look at the zero here, you have, this is not second order, right? If you look at the book, for example, let's look at the scale assessment exercise, second order approximation is not valid. But in part B, he says second order approximation is valid. So let's look at that. So for part B, what we have here, is we have a so at B uh, you have each bar or oh, sorry G bar is 197.14 times s plus 7 it's almost the same thing except now this finite zero here or this finite pole has moved very close to the finite zero and in a sense, we are having, I'll put this in brackets, pole zero cancellation. Not brackets, I'll put it in quotes. Okay. So having this pole zero cancellation, so in other words, it's almost as if you can ignore this zero and this pole, and in then, in essence, you have a second order system. So, this, so that's why the book says second order approximation is valid. So here, we actually did not have to apply this rule of thumb because of this pole zero cancellation. Let's check this in MATLAB and let's get back to something very important in the sense. Let's define our new system as 197.14 now. And let's check our circuits our second order system by this pole zero cancellation as this and now what I can do is I can step h comma h2 if you look at this you can see now that you actually have two plots let me maximize this and it's actually uh, it looks like a critically uh, no it can't be a critically damped response it's an over damped response. Sorry, what am I talking about? It's over damped because the two poles, uh, you have real and unequal poles. Okay, so it's over damped. But anyway, the point is, you can see that the second order approximation is um, good. However, something very important you do not want to rely on pole zero cancellation in reality. So let me put this in red. Don't use this. Because you don't know, practically speaking, where your poles and sorry, where your zeros and poles are. So let's say you wanted to cancel a right half plane pole, which leads to instability, with a left half plane zero or right half plane zero. We'll shortly see where the zero is. Doesn't matter. That is, if the zeros don't affect the nature. That is, uh, whether the response is bounded or unbounded it doesn't affect the nature of the response however you really don't know where this pole is exactly in reality so you really cannot can use pole zero cancellation i just wanted to do the skill assessment exercise to show you an exam example of second order approximation now speaking of zeros in your book you can see it has a very nice explanation of the effect of zeros and I'll use this approach this more general approach he mentions I'm just going to copy and paste this because I can't explain this any better so another effect of a zero which is more general is as follows let's see be the response of a system T 
unity of us with unity in the numerator if we add a zero to the transfer function and you can read this section for more details about non-minimum phase systems and all that but the bottom line is okay I can't put this on this page so let me go to the next page and we'll look at it let's go read through it together let me zoom out okay so let C of us be the responsible system, T of us is the unity in the numerator. If we add a zero to the transfer function, so this is what we get, S plus A, T of S. But since our response is simply C of S, you can write this, you can write this expression, that is S plus A, C of S, equals S, C of S, plus A, C of S. So you can see that this S here is basically taking the derivative of our response. That's it. And this A is simply scaling our response. That's what's explained here. In other words, we are not really introducing a pole. I mean, it's a zero. So, basically, uh, depending on what, uh, if A, the negative of the zero is very large, the Laplace transform of the response is approximately AC of S. So, in other words, this dominates. So, it's just a scaled version of the original response. If A is not very large, then what we get is the derivative of our response, and that's, we're not affecting stability. So zeros just affect the nature of our response. They don't affect stability. And yeah, that's about it for the review. This lecture is only around 20 minutes long, and that, that's okay. So we'll just, uh, it's only 17 minutes long. So we'll stop here. So next time, what we're going to do is we're going to start Chapter 5. So please read Chapter 5 and start going through your homework. Make sure you understand all these ideas down cold so you can expand upon them or we can expand upon them in 3720. See you next lecture.